you guys, it's Malik again, and uh, I told you I was going to go ahead and put this one up. Uh, it's not a very long one, but it, we need to explain um, when it gets to some of these exploits that we're writing, and some people are saying that they can't get them to work. It may be because of this, what they're trying to do with them. There is something that we refer to as natting, and there is an upgrade to it, for lack of a better word, an upgrade, called padding. So we have nat and pat. So, what are they? Well, if you've seen some earlier videos where we get into uh, subnetting, uh, you learn very quickly that there's two different types of IP addresses. We have routable IP addresses and non-routable IP addresses. If every IP address was routable, we wouldn't need natting or padding because every machine could get out to the internet. But that's not the case. In your home network, the IP addresses on all of your internal machines cannot get out on the network by the cannot get out to the internet by themselves. If you have a 192.168 or a 10.10, .10, you cannot get out on the internet with that IP address. But you may go, well, well, wait, wait, I'm getting out on the internet just fine. Yeah, you are. You're getting out on the internet because your router is configured for padding. So this is how it works. Let's start first off with uh, what is NATing. Well, NATing is network address translation. The big thing here is it maps IP addresses on one network to an IP address on another network. But we got a problem. Natting requires a one-to-one -one relationship. So for every machine in one network, it needs to be mapped to another machine in another network, one-to-one. -one. So uh, let's see how this is used in a corporate environment or how this could be used in a corporate environment. To take a look, quick little setup here. We have somebody's home machine here that can get to the internet. And let's say this is a little bitty part of your work network. You have a DMZ, so you got two firewalls right here. And you have a web server, your router. Your web server, though, happens to have an internal IP address, a 10.10.10.7. Okay, so what happens here? Well, if this machine halfway across the world wants to get to the server, and they put in Let's just say they put in 10.10.10.7, or they put in your domain name. They're going to look for that, and they're going to try to resolve 10.10.10.7. Well, that is a non-routable address. It can't go over the Internet. It's not made to go over the Internet. It's private. So what's it going to do? Mm-hmm. Can't find it. So, we fix that by doing natting. We can apply this to the router. Mostly it's applied to the firewall. What we can do is we can take that 10.10.10.7 non-routable address and apply it to our routable address that we purchased. 69.14.7.24. That can go over the internet. 
there's two sides to your home router, your internal side and your external side. On your home router, you do have a routable IP address. You see your non-routable 169.168.1.1, but if you go snooping through it, you'll find your routable address. And you really don't even have to go snooping. There's multiple ways to find it. But this is how this works. So what happens now is when the machine halfway across the world wants to get to your web server, 69.14.7.24, it's going to be able to find it now because of natting. It is a one-to-one -one relationship. So that's all natting. So let's take it a step further. What about padding? Well, padding is port address translation. Now, it does the same thing. It maps IP addresses on a network to another network, much like NATing. But here's your big difference. It is a many-to-one relationship. You're going to see this all the time. So, how does this work? Well, simple little setup here. Four machines, non-routable addresses. 10.10.10.100, 10.10.10.101, 102, 103. They're hooked to a switch. They're hooked to a server. Can be hooked to firewalls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hooked to a router. Eventually goes outside. Okay. So, what happens if we don't set up anything? What happens if these machines want to go on the internet? Well, if they try, yeah, they're not going to make it. Because again, the 10.10 .10 network is non-routable. It can't go out. Now, if we were doing NATing, we would actually have to have a routable address for every non-routable address. So for 10.10.10.100, we would have to have a routable address associated with it. For 10.10.10.101, we would have to have a routable address for it. That could get expensive. For every non-routable address, we would have to have a routable address. If we were dealing with natting. But we're not. We're dealing with padding. So what we can do now is we can apply padding. We can say this network, the 10.10.10.0 CIDR 24 non-routable network, is equivalent to 69.14.7.24, which is routable. All of these machines will send, can get to the internet as 69.14.7.24. Now, just thinking about that could tend to be a problem. Let's say they can get out, but if you have a whole bunch of machines, hundreds and hundreds of machines going out on the Internet, and they're all going out as one IP address, how does the data know where to get back to? And how does it keep it straight? Well, it keeps it straight, and this is where the port comes in and port address translation, is because this is what happens. When, let's say the first machine, 10.10.10.100, decides it wants to go out to the Internet, well, it gets readdressed as 69.14.7.24, and it picks up a port number, let's say 5,000. Again, this could be any number. When 
101 goes out, it could pick up port number 5001. They're going out over different ports. They're coming in over different ports. Therefore, the data can stay straight. And of course, it's in the headers anyway, so. But the port is what allows multiple machines that are non-routable to use one routable address, but all traffic still stays segmented. You see padding in enterprises all the time. You got padding going on at home. Your phones, your laptops, your tablets all have non-routable addresses. But once they reach a router, they pick up a routable address to go out to the internet until they get back to your router, in which case they're returned back to their original non-routable address and sent back to the correct machine. Okay. So, in closing, NADing, Network Address Translation, it is a one-to-one -one relationship. Padding is Port Address Translation. It is a many-to-one relationship. Again, they still translate IPs. It's just how they do it. And the last little thing here is you may see they will refer to PAT as NAPT, Network Address Port Translation, or you will hear some people call it NAT overloading. Uh, I, I, I like NAT overloading. It sounds pretty cool. Um, sounds cooler than PAT. Um, but that's what those two are. It happens in every network. And without it, we would have to be using routable IP addresses on every one of our machines, um, or we'd have a huge amount of problems. All right. So this kind of goes back to uh, some some comments I got on some videos by people saying, you know, I can't get I can't get this to work. I can't get this to work. Does this you know does this attack only work in a virtual environment? Well, no, uh, and one such instance was um, they couldn't do a reverse connection. Uh, they typed everything right, but it wouldn't connect back. Well, it could very well be that what they tried to do, and I can, I can kind of back up here, um, what they tried, and again, I don't know, but what they tried to do is, let's say they were at home. And let's say this is their IP address. So they wrote their reverse connection. And when it asked them, well, what is your local port? They put 10.10.10.100. And they created the payload. And then they stuck that payload out in the cloud. It's on the internet. Okay. But the payload says, okay, when somebody downloads me, connect back to 10.10.10.100. Well, that can't happen. It could connect back to 69.14.7.24 because that's routable. But it cannot connect back to a non-routable address. So, you know, when you get into, and we're, we're not going to get this deep because, again, the, the pen testing things that we do are for internal networks, networks that we have permission to attack. Um, attacking a network over the Internet or throwing malware out, like a reverse connection on a website and having them connect back to you requires a pretty hefty setup. Um, and a different local port. It's got to be a routable port. Um, you can't do it with a non-routable port. So this video was kind of made to, to answer some of those questions of, of people that are kind of throwing things out there, like reverse connections, and they're not getting a response back. Well, they're not getting a response back because the IP address that they're putting in to respond back to, nobody can find. 
So it goes into understanding basic networking. Okay, so I hope this it helped you guys understand the difference between natting and padding, when to use them, uh, and, and what they do, uh, and how utterly important they are. Um, I've got a couple of more videos that I'm working on. One on uh, basic networking, actually, which is things you, you may not see too much anymore, token ring networks, um, bus networks, uh, and of course the ones you do see now, mesh networks, stars, all the different type of network topologies. If you want to get into networking, you need to understand all these topologies. So I'm working on setting those up now. So be on the lookout for those. All right, well, if you enjoyed the video, please uh, you know subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the little notification bell so you can, you can see when I'm uh, posting new ones. And drop me some comments on anything that you would uh, you would like to hear me explain. Uh, if I know it, I'll be more than happy to uh, explain it to you. But until then, I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate all the all the great comments and and all the subscribers and hope uh, hope everybody has a great night. Until next time.